Okay guys, welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video with me, Mediocre Gamer Man. So, uh, what I want to do here is kind of, uh, we talked about doing mid-game. And I think one of the things that a lot of players have a hard time with, I know I do, still, personally, because I'm still just now getting through the, the whole mid-game grind, is the arena. Uh, the arena meta, uh, is, it's, it's kind of fluid here right now because of swift parry and reaction gear and things like that. But, for mid game for bronze and, and moving into silver the meta is still speed it's still very definitive if you go first you have a really good chance of winning granted you have of course what you need so what i'm gonna do here is what i'm, I'm calling the arena series the mid game arena series i'm gonna start with speed leads what we what you need to do to make sure ensure that you go first and that is having a proper speed lead to prepare your team to outspeed your opponent. Uh, so what I'm going to do is there's uh, there's 10 champions who are basically the best speed leads in the game that are arena, uh, or not arena, that are uh, epics. And then there's also one rare. One rare that I want to talk about uh, that's easy, super, super duper easy for early to mid game players to get. Um, but we're gonna talk about each of them in turn. I don't have all of them, I wish I did. Uh, a couple of them I really, really wish I did. But we're gonna go through and talk about them. Uh, and, they're, and they're in no particular order, though I wanna start out very first with probably the one that, that, well, I mean, everybody's gonna have her. You get her as your daily login reward uh, when you first start the game. Uh, and that is gonna be High Katoon. Hikatoon is far and away one of the absolute best uh, speed leads, especially especially as you move through mid game. Uh, and we'll look at her aura. It's a nineteen percent, which is it's pretty good actually. I mean, there's there is better, but it's in all battles. Now we're just talking about arena for this, but she's useful everywhere until you get someone better. Now uh, the rest of her kit's actually really useful. Uh, we'll start with just her A1, which you won't really use as much. I don't know why I'm wearing this. I'll take this off. I'm sorry. Um, so with her A1, she attacks one enemy, has a 25% chance of placing a 30% decreased speed debuff for two turns. So that removes, that's the speed. If you build her with some accuracy, she's going to help you slow down the enemy team. Her A2. This is the one that, that really is, is really crucial to her kit. Uh, Rally the Horde, level 1. Uh, fills the turn meters of all allies by 15% and places a 30% increased speed buff on all allies for two turns. This filling turn meter is super important. The more turn meter fill your speed lead has, the less speed you need on your other team teammates, which means they can go slower and have more attack, defense, um, accuracy, whatever whatever stats you need to make them hit the hardest and do their job. Uh, and then, of course, with the increased speed, means they're going to be going a second time faster. Um, and then her Shamanic Lightning, her A3, is attacks all enemies, has a 50% chance, 75 when booked, of decreasing the turn meter by 15%. Uh, not the most crucial part of her kit, the A2 definitely is. But Shamanic Lightning, if you don't destroy your team the the opponent's team on that first turn this if she goes fast enough which a lot of times if you build her with enough speed and you build her almost all speed and accuracy she can go again and slow that team down um and kind of help all of your team come back together uh to, to hit them again so really, really useful. She's one of the easiest uh, for newer players to, to get, of course, but also to gear. She has a great base speed at 104. Uh, anything over 100 really is, is good. Anyway, uh, next on the list, I've got them written down here. We're gonna start with some that aren't as well known. Chancellor Yasmin, she's not the best. But for whatever reason, uh, new players, we, we tend to pull those. We tend to pull those champs that you're just like, oh, that's who I pulled. Uh, so making use of those champions is really, really critical. I wouldn't put 
a ton of things into her. Really, you don't even need to book her. You don't need to do anything other than throw some speed sets on her, get her to five stars. Uh, you can get her to six, but her speed, she boosts it by 20%, all ally speed in all battles, which makes her useful everywhere for speed. But she's not useful everywhere. Keep her to the arena. That's where she, she needs to stay. Um, she doesn't have any speed boosting abilities otherwise. So you need to make sure all of your team are closer in speed. But she does have a 75% chance of removing all buffs from all enemies. Then placing a sleep debuff on one turn on all enemies who still have active buffs. It's, it's not the best ability, but removing all buffs is kind of critical for those, uh, you know, unkillables or the shield. shield uh, the shield meta is insane sometimes, but you need to be able to remove those buffs. You don't have Madame Saris, she's the one you want. Uh, there's a couple of others, but I mean, for speed lead, if you pull her, you can use her. Uh, she has a heal, 60% if the ally has 50% or less. Not really useful because it's not... It's not a, a heal all allies. So, definitely, if you get somebody better, use them. Okay. So, let me write down who we've uh, we've done here now. Uh, next is going to be... Let's see. Let me find him. Jingle Hunter. Uh, Jingle Hunter is one of those uh, Christmas champs. Um a lot of people actually, you'll actually see him, uh, sorry, let me fix that. You'll see him a lot in, um, in arena, in like lower arena or mid game arena because he has an ally speed in arena battles by 24%. That is huge. Uh, anything over 20% is huge. Uh, and most of the ones that are arena based are, are over 24% or over 20%. Um, but he's got... He's got an interesting kit that can make him kind of useful. He attacks all enemies, decreases the turn meter by 20% if this attack is critical. Fills his champion's turn meter by 10% if this attack is critical. So kind of boosting himself. Uh, he has a... Attacks on an enemy has a 100% when book chance of placing a freeze debuff on all enemies for one turn if this attack kills the enemy. The problem is it doesn't hit hard enough for it to kill. But generally this is the ability that goes first. And if he's fast enough and he can go again and just kind of clear off that enemy, then it, any other uh, chance they have are freezed. Uh, and his A1 decreases speed. If it's critical, it doesn't hit super hard, but it hits hard enough that if you build him right, he's, he's useful. So Jingle Hunter is kind of an, an overlooked champ, uh, but you, you can get use out of him, especially on a freeze team. I uh, go through these quicker because it's taking some time. I don't have her, but I want her. Battle Sage. Ally speed in all battles by 19%. She's got a decent speed, like I said, at 100 here. She has a revive on death on target ally. She has an increased attack buff on all allies for two turns. Then removes all debuffs on all allies. This buff cannot be removed. Super awesome ability just because... A lot of your nukers are going to be attack based. Your trundas, your kales, your um, God, there's so many nukers out there. Skull crowns and sinashes and all them that uh, that are you know used. That this having this increased attack that cannot be removed makes a huge difference. It's a fifty percent increase attack. If their attack is two thousand, they're getting an extra thousand. Their attack's four thousand, they're getting an extra two thousand. It, it does a lot for attack based champs. Uh, and then, of course, she has an attacks all enemies on her A1. Um, I don't know uh, what the multipliers are like on her on her attack there, but really that's not what she's there for. She's there for the speed aura and keeping your team alive. This is actually a really useful ability, and this is, is clutch for getting that buff you need. So, uh, let's see. Okay, next is who? Let's see trying to think i think he's sacred order yeah everybody knows him everybody loves him everybody who has him uh is blessed deacon armstrong is uh, every every content creator you watch talks about how much they like this guy or they want this guy increase ally speed in all battles by 19 percent. not the best but it's his kit that makes him so useful 
He has 100 percent or 100 speed, which makes him right there on par. He fills the turn meters of all allies by 15 percent and decreases the turn meters of all allies or all enemies by 15 percent, and then grants an extra turn, meaning that once he's booked, this is actually on a two-turn cooldown. Uh, brings it down to three turns, and then that extra turn brings it down to a two-turn cooldown. Um, it doesn't get much better than that, folks. Uh, sweeping attribution, attacks all enemies, has an 80%, 100, 100% chance. I thought it was going to be 105. I was looking at that wrong. Has a 100% chance of placing a 60% decreased defense debuff. If you don't have a debuffer, you now do. Granted, this is, you know, he's going to use this, then he's going to use that. This makes him far and away one of the best speed boosting champions in the game. Even though it doesn't boost the turn meter by a whole lot, it reduces turn meter. Then grants him an extra turn, and then he can place that decreased defense. So, really useful. Plus, he's got a leech on his A1. Not as useful in uh, Arena, but everywhere else, this guy just is amazing. Um, one of the best, one of the best epics in the game. Okay, now we're gonna talk about another champion. Sorry, we just skipped there. I was thinking about who I wanted to do next. I'm going to put him on the list because I needed 10. I wanted 10. 10 is a nice number. Um, but he is. He is easily one of the best champions on this list. The caveat to that is he's not accessible to early game players. Um, I don't believe he can be pulled. I don't. If, if I'm wrong, post it in comments below. Uh, let me know. But I do not believe he can be pulled in any way beyond his fragments. He has an increased ally speed in arena battles by 17%. Probably, the, I think, the lowest one on this list. I could be wrong, though. No, the rare is lower. Uh, but I think his is about the lowest. Uh, but that's not why he's amazing. His passive, he's immune to turn meter decreasing effects, which makes him amazing absolutely everywhere. And then his psychic guidance. So on a three-turn cooldown, places a 30% increased speed buff 30% increased crit rate buff, and a 30% increased crit damage buff on all allies for two turns. You can now, because of him, you don't have to put as much speed, you don't have to put as much crit rate or as much crit damage for your allies to hit as hard. You can pump up that crit damage number and lower that. That 30% increased crit rate is just crucial. That's crit gloves. That is half of what your crit gloves are. And then you, you're using somebody like Kale who already has a higher chance of, of getting a crit. Like I think they have an extra, I don't remember what Kale has. Is it 15% or, I'm pretty sure it's a 15% uh, extra crit rate uh, when using his Acid Rain. So that, that takes out so much crit needed and you can boost it with crit damage and attack. Time Slip attacks one enemy, also attacks all other enemies if the first attack is critical, it's gonna be. The second hit has a 50% chance, uh, that is a 75% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn. After attacking, decreases the turn meters of the enemy without a stun debuff by 20%. Basically, if he doesn't put them out, he knocks them back 20%. Huge. Attacks one enemy, fills his turn meter by 10%, fills the turn meter by 20% if this attack is critical. It's going to be. So his whole kit basically makes him just fly through and in turn helps your team fly through. So he's he's one of the best there is. The problem is he's not accessible to early game players unless you just get really lucky with your pulls and are able to push through Doom Tower. I don't have him yet because I'm just now starting to get to where I have teams to beat all of the different bosses in normal. Uh, he is in normal, which is amazing. But until you're able to get through normal pretty regular, he's not going to be someone you're going to get. So, bummer. Absolute bummer, but it is what it is. Okay. So, the next ones. Let's go down here. Uh, do He is here, isn't he? Yeah, here he is. Gorgorab. We're going to talk about him next. He's the one that a lot of players are going to get. For whatever reason... Pulling him seems to be the easiest out of out of a lot of these. Um, I think every account that I have, I have three accounts. Every account has him. Um, he has increased ally speed in arena battles by twenty three percent, which his speed's not the best, but his aura is better. 
He has a revive ability that is one of the most aggravating abilities in the game. If he's on the enemy team, you want him to go down first. Because he revives any dead allies with 25%, then he heals all allies by 25%. Effectively putting them around the 50%, maybe a little bit above. Uh, really an amazing ability, but really aggravating. Uh, but this is the ability he'll use first. Fills a turn meter of allies by 15%. Place a 50% increase attack buff on all allies for two turns. Like I said, attack based champs are where you're going to be getting your nukers. And then misfortune. Attacks when an enemy has a 50% chance of removing one random buff. It becomes 75% when booked. If you build him with accuracy, which I don't see him built with accuracy a lot. He's mostly built a ton of speed and survivability. But if you build him with accuracy, he can help remove buffs. Honestly, I wouldn't... I wouldn't bank on that because you want him to go as fast as possible. The faster the better. Let us now move on to the last two. I think everybody here probably knows who they are uh, just because they are some of the well, most well known. We're going to start with Doom Priest. Uh, Doom Priest is just an amazing, uh, an amazing epic all around. I wish I had her. As you can see, I do not have her. I have Sinesha. Not the one I want. I want Doom Priest. I pulled four several times. Um, she has an uh, increased force ally speed. So she doesn't have the best aura because it's very niche. Uh, but if you have force allies on your team, she is just absolutely amazing. Um, and it's it's all battles. So comes in handy there. But really, she's, she's not just used as a speed lead. She's used for other things. That's why I'm putting her on this list. Uh, so her bolster, which is her passive. Heals all allies with 7.5% of their HP and removes one random debuff from them at the start of this champion's turn. Put her in Relentless and she will keep all debuffs off your team. Place a 50% increased attack buff on our allies for two turns. If you don't have an increased attack, she's the champion to go for. Fate Weave uh, attacks when an enemy if it hits critical. Place a 50% increased crit rate buff on a random ally for two turns. Can't really count on that. I know it's a very niche ability, but she is so useful in so many places. She has a decent speed. Honestly, if you don't make her your speed lead, if you've got her, put her on your team. Uh, very, very useful. And then Skull Crown. Skull Crown, however, unlike her sister Doom Priest, does not have that caveat. A little bit lower speed. But increases ally speed in arena battles, arena battles, arena battles by 23%. Has a passive, revives this champion with 30% 30 per, 30 HP if Sinesha is on the same team. Her and Sinesha are generally part of what's called blender teams where you have like ally attack. Uh, and so it, basically what happens is you build up a bunch of attack uh, for her and Sinesha to hit. And they will, uh, I mean, just slam super hard. Um, it's really, really useful for just tearing down teams. Um, but this passive, uh, place an unkillable buff on this champion for one turn every time their HP drops below 20%. It's on a four turn cooldown. So you're never going to see this more than once in the arena. If she's getting hit that hard, she's only got that one turn. But the number of times that I have been wrecked by a Skull Crown that survived, because you can build her with no defense whatsoever, all attack, all crit damage, and crit rate, she doesn't even have to go fast. As long as she doesn't get stunned, she will slam. And it is very painful. And even if she does it, like you say, you build her to go. Attack all enemies has a 50% chance of placing a 25% weakened debuff for two turns. And then on her, her wave of souls, or A1, attacks all enemies, places an extra hit if the target has more than 50% HP. The, the issue is if she doesn't knock them below 50% HP, she's not going to kill them. So, but she is absolutely amazing. I wish I had her. If you have her, good job. Um, if you have Sinesha to go with her, you got, yeah, there you go. So, um, all right, but those two are, uh, they're, they're, Skullcrown is an amazing arena speed lead. Doom Priest is, is 
I'd say she's probably at the bottom of this list, but she's still pretty awesome, and she has some great uses. And so the last one we're going to talk about is actually a rare. Um, a lot of times, newer players just don't pull good speed leads. Uh, even if you have High Katoon, uh, you know, High Katoon is best when booked. She's great unbooked, but she's best once she's booked. Uh, and so you get in this thing where you need a good speed lead. Spirit Host is a rare. She is easily farmable. You actually get her from the campaign. Uh, we'll actually go in real quick before... Um, no, wait, hold on. What am I doing? I think she's four. Yeah. You get her from campaigns. Uh, anything in Chapter 4. Uh, so and you can farm, and that's crit, da or crit rate. So you're going to farm there quite a bit when you're early on trying to get some crit rate gloves with uh, crit rate set crit rate gloves, uh, which is one of the best ways to get crit rate early on as a new player. Um, but her speed lead isn't the best. It's an ally speed in all battles by 10%. She has an okay speed, but you build her up with speed, and she's, she's definitely going to move your team along. She's like I said, she's not the best. She's not gonna boost your team like Hikatoon does. But what she brings to the table is actually really useful. And you'll actually see her early on. I've seen her in silver. Um, I actually saw her as a lead in gold once. Uh, and that team was actually pretty awesome, but there was some Legos surrounding her. Now, normally what you see is her uh, being in there as a debuff locker and uh, increasing attack. but. Let's go ahead and go through her kit. Her A1 attacks when enemy heals by 50% of the damage inflicted. It's useful because in you know other battles, she's going to help keep herself alive. But this is probably what she's going to use generally as her first turn. When she goes, places a 50% increase attack buff on all allies for two turns on a three-turn cooldown. Um, she's your attack up champ. She gives you a little bit of speed. If you don't have anybody better, she's great. But here's the other one. Let's say, let's say you survive that first turn, but you got a whole bunch of debuffs sitting on you. You got poisons, you got, somebody's got a stun, you may even have a freeze on somebody. Um, you know, all those different things that are gonna make it hard on you to go forward. She removes all of them, places a block debuff buff on all allies for one turn. Basically kind of cutting all of those out and, and helping you maybe push to get that second turn kill. Um, she's a rare, she plays like a rare, if you once you get better you're definitely going to want to switch over to someone better but in the meantime if you're a new player building spirit host is never a bad idea because she does play in a bunch of places early on in uh, like early to mid game She's a great debuffer until you get better until you get someone like reliquary tender or something like that she's really great to use she does have that increased attack and she can keep herself alive she actually hits pretty hard she hits hard for a rare. So, but those are the, the 10 best speed leads, I think, for uh, for epic and below, like epic and rare. They're the best speed leads you're going to get. Um, the key thing to remember is your speed lead can't be too much faster than your team. Depending on what their turn meter boost is, you're wanting to keep your team within that certain range because there's no point in having a speed lead that's running at 300 speed and the rest of your team's at 175. There, that speed lead is not going to be able to boost them enough, even if they have a turn meter increase, to get your team going fast enough to outstripe the other team. Because the worst thing that can happen is your speed lead goes first and then you get cut in by the enemy team and they just wipe you out. And it's just, it's a waste. So definitely speed tuning is a big part of it. And we'll go over that in, in the a later video. Uh, but for now, thank y'all so much for joining. Uh, I'm going to try and do another arena meta team, uh, mid-game arena um, video. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, like, comment, subscribe down below. Really appreciate it. Definitely check out my Twitch as well. I stream on Wednesdays. Uh, Fridays and Saturdays doing raid, just sometimes just basic cleanup on my account. Uh, but feel free to join in and take a look. Um, but thank you all so much. You all have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.